So, yeah, so the, the construction industry uses, uh, you know, an awful lot of energy, an awful lot of um, stuff. And architecture um, traditionally has been, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but it's mildly unrelated to materials and how things get down the production line. Exactly. Is that is that something that, that I am right on or is you're, it? Yeah, I think actually you're very much right on it because it's more of a newer thing and uh, I know Jenny Sabine uh, has come up with a concept of letting the materials dictate the form and the shape mm -hmm. and that's more or less what I'm working with because I think honestly in this day and age when you're thinking about climate change you have to be sourcing your, your materials responsibly and thinking about, okay, how am I going to build this project with the least worst impact? I yes. mean, any time you build, you're creating carbon you yeah. know, consumption. Yeah. So it, it's time for us to really seriously begin thinking about sourcing our materials correctly. Mm -hmm. And so that's the approach that I'm taking. And I think that um, we need to return to a lot of the vernacular architecture locally as inspiration. And I'm not the only one who says this. Julia Watson, who's a big founder of the low tech movement, also thinks that we should be looking at this old past technology and looking at it and applying it in new ways. Because if you're using local stuff and building locally and using local techniques, then you're just you're being a lot more responsible. That was interesting because obviously we're, we're we're here in Cape Town. Uh, yesterday I was listening to the uh, Minister for Culture, Arts and Sport, as it is now, talking about how they want buildings built that don't look like they were built in Dubai. And so you know, there's a sort of a very great sense of nationalism here. And I, what I take from that, though, is the idea that, that this local sourcing um, could reimagine the way that we look at buildings aesthetically as yes. well as functionally is that aesthetically something? and also in terms of cultural identity yeah. so when we look at larger cities these days we just see a bunch of buildings that could be anywhere in the world because they're all just your standard you know star architecture you know <laughs> Zaha Hadid has a project here 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 and it's all in her style and that could be in any city in the world but when you're thinking about local, you're thinking about materials that are sourced and represent that local area. So it could really redefine national identity mm. through architecture in a way that's really positive and meaningful for people. Mm. Excellent. And um, you, you're a kind of a, a graduate that's gone in. I just overheard that you're get, you, you, you've been awarded some funding. Yes. To continue. <laughs> uh, how is um, obviously academia is 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 very uh, uh, much concerned with creating systems, processes, theories and, and, and implementing them. Is the relation, what's the relationship that you found between academia, the construction industry and the wider world? Is there a... Is there a is there an um, the relationship that I have found is that um, my school has a lot of resources that are available to alumni and they've been really, really helpful about letting me use them and use those facilities um, in order to establish myself. And with regards to um, the construction industry in Denmark, there's so much funding and there's so many opportunities for uh, young entrepreneurs, young ideas, and there's so many things that I can take advantage of. So there's just, there's space, there's storage, there's mentorship, and there's funding. 